hi there and karibu tuku za matunda and welcome back to this channel and uh, today i want to quickly highlight uh, the effects of uh, hailstones on our tree tomatoes uh, fruits and um, the place you see here this is uh, in Naivosha uh, if you are an ardent follower of this channel you'll know that I also grow passion fruits um, and I just decided to do um, a line or two of uh, tree tomatoes um, like I mentioned this is Naivasha and recently we received uh, some very heavy downpour which didn't last for long by the way I think it was only 20 minutes um, but it was just not the normal rains that we are used to but rather it was with hailstones and as a result as a, as a result our fruits were you know were badly damaged if you take a closer look there sorry it's early in the morning the sun is rising being the amateur video taker don't expect uh, much I struggle a lot with trying to balance the light and all that but I hope you can see those marks eh? that's that is what I want to focus on and uh, apparently this is the first time we are receiving uh, such rains uh, on our orchard uh, last year I think last year but one it was even worse uh, by that particular time I had not put this piece of land into use but my neighbor's crop were completely destroyed um, I planted these fruits in April of 20, 2021 and as, I, as you can see uh, yeah we are now uh, harvesting them um, this being Naivasha Naivasha is relatively warmer uh, hence um, you expect the fruits to respond faster and as you can see these fruits are already already ready for harvesting so we are talking of less than a year in fact uh, today being April is it April 8th uh, and we had planted them on 10th of April last year then it's one full year and you can see we already have fruits that we can take to the market this is what I keep on saying this this fruit responds differently to different uh, regions um, and in Naivasha I have proved that uh, the fruit can take a year for it to fully uh, grow so um you take a closer look at this particular fruits that i want to take yeah see that those are effects of hailstones right uh, this one took uh, a proper beating and uh, one other thing that i can tell you is that the more exposed your tree is or the less the leaves uh, the more hit the tree uh, or rather the more the fruits uh, get a lot of damages um, I've noted that I have a few trees here that have more more leaves cover right their canopy is well established and as a result you realize that uh, where you have more leaves there's less damage and the opposite is true right so 
Then the other thing that you'll also notice with these fruits, uh, unlike in our Nyandarwa orchards, um, that's an orange as well. Uh, unlike in our Nyandarwa orchard, that is in Tumaini, here the fruits don't achieve that very deep red eh? because when it gets hot here, it really gets hot. Eh? So this is a good example. This tree doesn't have much of, of cover. Um, Yes, yeah, so I'm saying this tree doesn't have much of vegetation cover, or rather the leaves, the canopy is not very well established. And you can see the fruits really uh, got a proper beating. And uh, if you compare this tree to this one here, you can clearly see that this one has more vegetation. By vegetation, I mean more canopy more leaves and as a result surprisingly the fruits under here didn't were very well shielded so there is proof that uh, all these elements when god was creating these plants they had a natural defense mechanism so if you feed your tree well uh, more canopy expect the tree to also take less of uh, beating and the opposite is true. Like for this particular fruit, you can clearly see it is very much exposed. And uh, besides the the fruit uh, looking that twist, if you look up here, you see these marks on the branches. Eh? Those ones. Eh? Those ones are, are as a result of the hailstones. Eh? And it just shows you how bad uh, or how heavy the hailstones. Wow. And in many cases, you'll also find leaves shredded like this. You see this particular one here? Uh, those holes. Um, and we also had a number of fruits here that aborted. So after the hailstones, a, a day after, we could find uh, uh, a lot of fruits eh, just dropping off the branches. So... This is not the first time I'm experiencing hailstones. Um, and uh, I think note to self is that uh, because I'm lucky I have several uh, orchards or different locations where I can grow fruits, I've been keenly observing the rain patterns. And uh, what I'm trying to do is that if I notice a region is more prone to hailstones, then out of the experience that we have, we there are some fruits that we won't even attempt to grow in certain regions. For example, we'll be cutting down the number of a, a tree tomatoes in our tomato orchard because when it when it rains, the downpour there is always, in many cases, accompanied by rain, uh, by hailstones. And we've noted that, uh, surprisingly, our passion fruits, as much as they took a hit, uh, you know, the effect was not as bad as for the uh, the tree tomatoes. We also have a few papaya trees here and just to show you how badly uh, the papaya trees equally got a proper beating yeah and see this see uh in fact because i was here the day after it rained um let me show you this particular one here um Yes, you see those marks? The whitish stuff, eh? I think they were crying, eh? Because initially it was like a milk eh, substance. And now I think it's the one that is helping heal the wound. Eh? But yeah, you see that? That is as a result of the hailstones, eh? So 
on this orchard I do have uh, three tomatoes I do have passion I do have some oranges some pineapples yeah that's a pineapple growing some has avocados so it's a mixture of fruits eh? and now let me show you uh, how our passion fruits uh, were affected so this is yellow ah this is purple passion fruits eh? i also have yellow but you see those white marks there you see those ones that was the only damage our fruits uh, took it wasn't bad eh? um it compared to uh, the tree tomatoes eh? and the purples so this fruit uh generally i think handled the hailstones very well and i have no doubt that uh once these fruits mature as much as you can see them scarred uh, i should be able to sell them without much of a hassle uh, in our markets right but uh i'm saying this because in the past i've i've had uh uh, my fruits uh, hit by hailstones and on I'm talking about three tomatoes and I really had a hard time trying to sell them in the local market those who are already typing or you can sell to juice manufacturers maybe passion <laughs> but uh, tell me who is going to manufacture juice with a ton of three tomatoes which you are producing every two weeks it's, it's, it's not possible when you go out there and test the market, then that's when you know that uh, at times it's just very difficult to, to sell these things. And after all, I'm saying this that tree tomato or tree tomato or tamarillo juice is not one of those fast selling uh, juices in our market. But this passion one, this does sell. So I have no doubt that as much as they you can see those small scars, by the time this fruit matures, then I should be able to sell these fruits. Uh, without a hassle. Uh, I've said I've faced some challenges in the past trying to sell fruits and I mean three tomatoes that uh, had been uh, affected by uh, health stones. So I'm speaking this from experience, right? So um, the ones that are badly affected, I think we just feast on them. I'll take them to my mama and tell her to try all the recipes that she can never think of. Uh, from juice to smoothies to giving them out to friends. Because the market is not so kind when you take the fruits, the tree tomatoes with such marks. So what do you do? Um, should you experience hailstones uh, in your farm i think the number one thing that uh, many people will tell you is that you do a copper spray uh, a copper spray will help the fruit from you know you see now this is an open wound eh? so and if you look closer here see these wounds eh? to avoid further spread eh? see that that's a wound so you need to address the wound. Eh? So what you do, some will advise that you do a copper spray. Uh, that helps in ensuring that there will be no further infection on the wound. And when I talk of further infection, those marks can enlarge and as a result make the fruit even more undesirable. But on the other hand, because these fruits... Uh, you're talking of less than a, how many trees? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have around, yeah, on, and on the other side, I think I have around the same uh, number. So you're talking of around 20 trees. So these ones are not for commercial, um, but basically for our own consumption. And uh, so I won't be spraying anything on these ones. And after all, like I've mentioned before, once the damage has been done uh, even if you do that spray it's just to slow down the wounds but the damage has already been done in my opinion so whether you spray it or not it is not gonna improve the quality 
of the fruit but rather it would uh, slow down in terms of uh, the fruit deteriorating in terms of quality um, so these ones are for my for home consumption uh, yeah so I won't be spraying anything uh, the ones that survive survives the one that didn't get hit we can sell if we want uh, we can feast on them but uh, for this particular orchard uh, we won't be spraying them so we allow the fruit to naturally grow here um, besides the effect I've said besides the effect on the fruits uh, I mentioned the leaves being destroyed plants uh, flowers also are boating all those are effects that you're likely to experience if your health if your orchard is hit by health stones it can get worse um, see those marks and all that uh, yeah so if you notice and region is very much prone to to health stones I would urge you to think twice eh? before you go big on tree tomatoes because I can tell you the market will disappoint you um, one other thing that I've seen farmers do there is one particular farmer that I know when his orchard was hit by hailstones, what he did is that he went and pruned everything. And, uh, and then he allowed the tree to sprout afresh. Um, and that means that you forfeit all the fruits that were growing at that particular point, right? Yeah, so this can mean a lot of destruction. Uh, maybe the other thing I'm here to do it. Crop insurance, I think it's something else that maybe you can think of. If you know of a, an insurance company that you can work with. Uh, because if your fruits get this damaged, I can tell you all, the, all your investment will be in vain. Yeah, so hope you've learned something. Um, please also let me know. Uh, what you do to uh, once you receive such uh, because you have no intentions of putting a what, what do you call those uh, uh, those covers eh? shade nets eh? you have no intention on I mean putting them on top because those ones could equally be used uh, to minimize the effects of hailstone on the fruits we have no such intention but i think that's also another solution uh yeah so anyway thank you so much uh, thank you for keeping it here thank you for all the support uh, and feedback um yeah and thank you so much for even subscribing and all the encouragement that you continue to share don't take it for granted uh, keep it here and uh, I'll keep you posted thank you, bye